now we can move to next important topic here which is pseudo membranous colitis pseudo membranous colitis so we'll try to understand the meaning first this is our colon this is our git our git normally contain friendly bacteria normally git contain friendly bacteria now the question is why we say they are friendly bacteria what is the advantage they give to us the advantage they give to us is they protect the git from growth of pathogenic bacteria the question is they stop the growth of pathogenic bacteria how why so they stop the growth of pathogenic bacteria simply due to competition they are present in lakhs if the pathogenic bacteria 100 200 500 1000 10000 come they will not get enough food to eat so the pathogenic bacteria will st starve and die so one is competition for food second thing is that these release a substance called as bacteriocin so remember bacteriocin is a substance produced by the commensal bacteria which kill the pathogenic bacteria so in simple language till the time we have these commensal bacteria our git is safe pathogenic bacteria cannot cause infection now what happened we give a broad spectrum antimicrobial agent like clindamycin or like third generation cephalosporin so when we give them what will happen they will kill the commensal bacteria also so the normal commensal bacteria has been killed so when the commensal bacteria has been killed means now there is no protection to git no competition no bacteriocin so when there is no competition now any bacteria can come and start infecting the git so that infection is known as super infection remember what is super infection normally antibiotics are used to treat infection or prevent infection but here the antibiotic is causing infection so when the antibiotic is the cause of infection that is known as super infection so what has happened the commensal bacteria has been killed no protection in the git so now the pathogenic bacteria take over pathogenic bacteria start causing infection start causing infection start causing infection now whenever the body came to know that there is infection so what will happen yes wbcs will come running wbc have started coming running so wbcs they will cover them all around wbcs they cover them all around they form a membrane around them remember this membrane is not a true membrane normally the membranes are consisting of epithelial cells but here the membrane is consisting of wbcs or pus cells only so this is known as pseudo membrane this membrane is pseudo membrane pseudo membrane now because it is infection of the colon so we can say colitis so this condition is known as pseudo membranous colitis so simple thing you need to remember pseudo membranous colitis is nothing but a super infection okay so pseudo membranous colitis is a type of super infection now coming to mcqs the first question regarding pseudo membranous colitis which is the most common bacteria that cause pseudo membranous colitis that is responsible for pseudo membranous colitis the answer is clostridium difficile Clostridium difficile is the bacteria which most commonly cause pseudo membranous colitis. Okay? Any bacteria can cause. Most common is Clostridium difficile, and it is so common that if you study Harrison, they do not use the word pseudo membranous colitis. They use the word as CDI. CDI is Clostridium difficile infection. So CDI is important. Clostridium difficile. Second question is which is the antibiotics or antimicrobials that causes pseudo membranous colitis commonly now in the sequence remember third generation cephalosporins are now the most common cause previously it was clindamycin but we have stopped using clindamycin that frequently so now the most common cause has become third generation cephalosporins the next drug which follows them is clindamycin the next most common cause is clindamycin after clindamycin the next important causes are fluoroquinolones and lastly the important cause are amino penicillins like ampicillin and amoxicillin so remember this sequence 
the drugs causing pseudomembranous colitis okay now moving to third and most important thing how to treat pseudomembranous colitis so here the guidelines have changed now the drug of choice for pseudomembranous colitis has become fidaxomycin Fidaxomycin is a macrolide. It has now become the drug of choice. Remember, fidaxomycin inhibit the uh, relapse. Remember, when we were treating with other drugs, we were able to treat, but again the person will develop the super infection after a few days. So, minimum risk of relapse is with the fidaxomycin. So, it is the drug of choice. But are the alternatives to this? Apart from fidaxomycin, we can use vancomycin. Vancomycin can be used, but special thing to remember, normally vancomycin is not effective orally. We know vancomycin is not effective orally because it cannot be absorbed. So, in this case, we are giving oral vancomycin because we do not want it to get absorbed. When we give orally, it is not absorbed, so it go to colon, kill the bacteria there. So, vancomycin is given orally for pseudomembranous colitis, only indication where it is given orally. So, apart from vancomycin, we can use metronidazole also. But now the drug of choice is fidoxamycin. And one last thing, we have also developed a monoclonal antibody against the clostridium toxin. Clostridium toxin, which is causing all the problems and that monoclonal antibody is known as bagelotoximab. 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 What is Bagelotoximab? You can remember it is a monoclonal antibody against the toxin. Whose toxin? If we write a small c here, it will become Clostridium toxin. So, Bagelotoximab is a monoclonal antibody against Clostridium toxin. It can be used for treatment of pseudomembranous colitis. Okay. So, that is important about pseudomembranous colitis.